I'm Leah Lawrence. And I'm her husband, Mitch Lawrence. And you are listening to Tailgate Tales, a special series of the Southern Spirits podcast. Each week of this football season, we are talking about a story from one school in the Southeastern Conference. So which one are we going to talk about this week, Leah? Well, today we're talking about Mississippi State University. All right. Well, Mississippi State is 4-2 and two so far this season. And this Saturday, October 20th, they are playing LSU at 4 p.m. Well, let's meet the mascot, why don't we? Let's. Mississippi State goes by the Bulldogs. Their mascot name is Bully, and it originated in 1935. They have a a live mascot, a Bulldog, and a costume mascot. If you will go on the Google Drive real quick and look up my notes, you can see a picture that I put up of them. I love Bulldogs. All of you can't do that, I'm sorry. (laughs) But Leah can do that. She can see the picture of them. It's very cute. Bulldog, bulldog, bulldog. While you do that, I'm going to give you the quote from the Saturday Down South article. Oh my God, they're I've gotten, so cute. Where I've gotten all of the information about our mascots. So here comes the quote. Up until 1961, Mississippi State was known as the Maroons, a reference to the school's color. However, Bulldogs had been used as a nickname unofficially for much of the school's history, used interchangeably with Maroons and Aggies when the school was known as Mississippi A&M. Bulldogs was officially adopted when Mississippi State was granted university status. In 1935, the Bulldogs brought out their first live mascot, named Ptolemy, and the team beat Alabama shortly after bringing the dog to campus. I mean, I guess that's an accomplishment, but damn, that's a cute dog. <laughs> oh. Well, they've had a few of them, just like everybody Look at else. His sweet when you have a live face. one, you know, they'll oh. be used. And I actually kind of like the mascot head, too. Yeah, like, it's really cute, isn't it? It's, it's a little vicious, but <laughs> I really just want to, like, jiggle its jowls and tell it it's a good boy. So. Yeah, I found a really good picture where the, the costume mascot is lying down like Burt Reynolds, and the live mascot is in front of him, and they're just together, and it's really cute. It's adorable. Yeah. 10 out of 10 would click that picture. <laughs> Did click that picture. Indeed. And put it on our Google Drive. Yes. All right. Well, what are we going to talk about, Leah? Oh. Oh, wait, real quick. I'm still drinking Monkey Knot. Excellent. I still have Monkey Knot going through from straight to ale. I'm not near done with it yet. I still have two six packs left out of that case we bought. This stuff is so good, though. All anyway, right. Well, go ahead. buckle up, y'all, because we are doing a true crime tonight. Um, I like true crime. And it gets a little crazy and. It can be a little violent in the description of what happened to some of these people. So if that is not your bag, if you're only in it for ghosties, this isn't your episode, y'all. Just be warned, there is some description of some violence. So if that's not your thing, we will see you tomorrow uh, for the regular episode. I don't think anybody gets shot or anything in that one. What? What if it's not my thing? Well, then you can plug your ears. I don't know. Do I have to be here? You kind of do. I'm Uh, sorry. But anyway, that's just a heads up. Uh, Yeah. Violence ahead. All right. Well, hit me with it. Tonight, we are talking about um, the Starkville double-double murders. Double-double? Double-double murders. This is a basketball player that did it. Mm -mm. Mm-mm. No. Okay. Okay. Um, and like I said, stick with me because like we're going down an avenue and then we're going to hook around and things are going to get weird. I, I don't know. OK. All right. Whew. All right. Looking forward so, to this. <clears throat> we are starting at um, December the 11th of 1922 in front of a fraternity house at Mississippi State University in Starkville, Mississippi. Now, there were two students there was john steckler who was 19 years old and he was a member of the fraternity of the fraternity house that they were in front of which fraternity house was it i never found that information never mind um he was 19 years old um a freshman and then there was tiffany miller who was 22 years old and uh, i believe she was a third year sophomore because she had taken a year off okay so uh we got a 19 year old and a 22 year old outside of the fraternity house and they what everybody thinks happened was that they basically caught someone robbing one of the other fraternity brothers cars Mm -hmm. and they were like dude stop robbing these people's car hey cut it out yeah just maybe don't do that um and basically someone 
forced them into Tiffany's car and uh, they basically kidnapped him. Um, and mm. so about an hour later, someone going down the highway found John Steckler, the, the boy, the 19 year old outside. Or, well, they had shot him in the back of the head oh, God. Uh, and they left him dead on the left him for dead on the side of the road. He mm. wasn't dead. Um, well. And he had also been run over by Tiffany's car. Oh, God. Which was a Toyota MR2. I don't know what that is, but I assume it's just a little car, right? Uh, I, I don't know. Um, anyway, so guy. when the police officers finally arrived uh, on the scene of the crime, they found Tiffany's body in the nearby woods. She had been sexually assaulted, and she had been shot twice, once in the forehead and once in the mouth. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> and shortly thereafter... Um, Steckler died of his wounds as well. John John also died. Yeah. Um, so the next morning, Tiffany's car was found uh, right off of the Mississippi State University campus. Um, so also the morning after, the one of the fraternity brothers, whose name was John Wise, uh, found his car had been burglarized and... That's the car they assumed they had stopped the person from, you know, mm -hmm. robbing. Um, well, was trying to stop them from robbing. Yeah. Um, so they basically found that uh, they had stolen uh, a gas token, which I don't even know what a gas token is. Back in the day, uh, you couldn't just get gas when you wanted. You had to get basically vouchers for gas. You didn't just pay money for it. So it's like a gas token... It's just like I went and paid for gas, and now I get a token, and now I can fill my tank up. That's really weird, but yeah. okay. Um, That's a real thing. Look okay. it up. Okay. That's <laughs> fine. I tried to look it up, and it didn't give me anything, so, <laughs> so thank you for that. I don't think it was everywhere, but it yeah. was a real thing. I know that. All right. So they had stolen gas tokens, and a token, the, the same token had been found at the scene of the killing, so they think that that sort of linked them. Um, there was also a black leather bomber jacket stolen um, and a portable CD player that was... Uh, I thought you said 1922. No. What year is it? 92, 92. I, I swear I heard 22. We'll go back and listen later. I don't I don't think so, but it was 92. Okay, okay. Um, 92. Got it. Because he, he was driving the Toyota in 22. That's well, that's what I was saying. I was no I was confused. That's uh -uh. why I thought gas token made sense. Because it was in the 20s. Uh-uh, 92. Okay. Well, I don't know about gas tokens in the 90s, but... Okay. That's just what it says. There's some crossover um, happening. But anyway, uh, a port portable CD player that they found in a pawn shop. Um, and basically the pawn shop person says they know who sold it and that was a man named uh -oh. Willie Jerome Fly Manning. Uh -oh. Flies in quotations. I think that's okay. his nickname. <laughs> he was Fly. Yeah. So <laughs> Willie Manning. Okay. Yeah. Um Jeff Goldblum. No. <laughs> Willie Manning. Thank mm -hmm. you for that fly joke. Um, yeah, you're welcome. Lol. Um and then so basically they testified the um person at the pawn shop testified that that's the person who sold him the stolen uh cd player and manning's girlfriend said yeah he gave me this leather jacket and it was that leather jacket um and the girlfriend also testified uh, that he had some of the other stolen property on his person, and that he had also been using a tree as target practice. Um, so the FBI came in, and they got slugs removed from the tree that she testified that he had been firing into, and they said that the same gun was used to kill, that was shooting those bullets, where this mm -hmm. was the same one to kill uh, both Steckler and Miller. Um, wow. Okay. And um, another person testified that she saw... Uh, Manning wearing that leather jacket and in possession of a gold class ring that looked exactly like the one that Steckler was wearing mm -hmm. uh, when he died. So um, basically Manning was like, I didn't 
commit any of those murders. <laughs> I was at the club on the night of the murders. What kind of club? The nightclub? Didn't say. The country just, club. He was at a murder. And he was saying that a dude the named... The yacht club. He, he, his argument was that he believed that a man named Jesse James, and in quotations, One Wing Lawrence... What? Um, that was his nickname, One, One Wing. One Wing Lawrence. Yeah, had committed the murders. But it turns out that guy was in jail in, in Alabama at the time, so it couldn't have been him. It's probably a relative of mine. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, but anyway, they also had... Um, he... Uh, Go ahead. There were other people that implicated <laughs> other people, and it was a whole bunch of he said, she said. There were a lot of, that. of suspects. There was a lot of, well, not even a lot of suspects, just like a lot of people giving weird mixed up stories about what did and didn't happen. Okay. Um, but anyway, Manning was eventually convicted of the murders of both Steckler and Miller. Um, they had a jury trial. The jury deliberated for only an hour. Um, and Manning was sentenced to death on November, November the 8th of 1994. Uh, um, and basically the jury said that instead of life in prison, he gets the death penalty because the crime was, quote, heinous, atrocious, and cruel. Okay. Um, so that's the first double murder. All right. I imagine there's another one coming. That makes it a double-double. Hey. Um, yeah. So the second double murder. Um so this is where it gets a little bit more gruesome. Um, My favorite. Yeah. So on January the 18th of 1993, which is Martin Luther King Day, um, it was about five weeks after the Steckler Miller uh, double murder. There was a 90 year old woman named Emmeline Hemerson, Jimerson. I don't know if you put a J or an H on that. Emmeline. Emmeline and her 60-year-old daughter, Albertha, which I love that name, <laughs> Jordan. Okay. Albertha is just a fun name. Mm -hmm. um, and they were both murdered during an attempted robbery in their apartment in Starkville. Um, so not specifically related to the campus in that, but it is in Starkville, which is where the university is. Mm -hmm. um, the victims were beaten with a an iron so like a clothes press wow. like an iron they were beaten to death with that and then after they were beaten uh forensic says about 10 minutes later whoever did this took a knife from the kitchen and completely slashed their throats okay uh-huh yeah it got real it got real real um real 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 yeah. So the state had a key witness in this particular trial, and his name was Kevin Lucius. Um, and he was a bad dude himself. Oh, uh, was he? He is serving uh, two life sentences without parole in St. Louis um, for murder convictions. Like right now? Yeah. Um, okay. And he testified that he had seen Manning entering the apartment um, on the night of the murders. And he said that um, Manning had told him later that he wouldn't have done it if he had known there was only $12 in the house. Um, <laughs> it, it, you know, he wouldn't mind killing him if there was more out of it. But yeah. for only $12 in the house, that sucks, you know. Wasn't um, worth my time. Exactly. Um, and Manning was like... Look, I was not at the apartment on Martin Luther King Day. No, just, mm-mm. Um, apparently, there were five other eyewitnesses that did place him there, including a guy named Herbert Ashford, who said that he saw him in the vicinity of the apartments on Martin Luther King Day, but also that um, he heard Manning saying that he should have uh, heard him more than he did because they only had $12 which mm. i don't understand so it's one of the two either they didn't have enough or and he shouldn't he was, have done it or they didn't have enough and so he should have done, done it more because they didn't have should have double yeah. killed him i guess yeah like i said i'm not there's a lot yes, of weird testimony and stuff but mm -hmm. um but apparently that lucius man was the only eyewitness to testify that he saw them entering the women's home and no one ever witnessed him leaving the apartment um and basically all of that ended up 
Anyway, after, okay. What does all of that mean? What you just did? There's, like I said, in this, there's a lot of he said, she said, and saying that someone was providing a false alibi, but maybe they mm-hmm. weren't, and it was a lot of really intense back and forth. And I, this is a very interesting case. So if y'all want, if you're really interested in it, seriously, go look it up. It's it's interesting. Um, but like I said, it's a lot of minute detail that we don't have time to get into okay that basically after a jury trial the deliberations lasted three hours and 12 minutes and manning was convicted of the murders of both Hemerson and jordan on july the 24th of 1996 okay. um, and once again the jury sentenced manning to death but he already had the other one he as well, has right? at this point he has four life sentences um but uh, what about the death sentences I mean, for deaths and for deaths. Okay, him. it's easy to confuse off. life and death. You yeah. know. <laughs> no, he has four death sentences at this point. Okay. okay. All right. Well, he is sentenced to death. Um, hold on, I've got a highlighted portion. Okay, he was sentenced to death, and his execution was scheduled on May the seventh of two thousand thirteen. Mm-hmm. But. Uh, the Mississippi Supreme Court ruled eight to one to grant Manning a stay of execution. Wow. That's a lot. So, basically what happened is in the... Scroll down. In that (laughs) Hemerson-Jordan case, basically they proved that that Lucius guy was making up fucking everything. um, Mm -hmm. And they had... (laughs) Basically, the the FBI, the reason for the stay of execution was that the FBI came back and you know how basically the hair evidence and stuff is kind of bullshit. And they, I, I don't know that. OK, well, you can match hair with DNA. You can. But in 1990, what's its buckets? Yeah. That was not a great science. And uh-huh. they were also overstating evidence. So in that particular case, the first one, they were like um, someone... One of the FBI crime analyst people said they knew for sure that it was an African-American hair that they found in the car. So Uh both the kids were white. This gentleman is black. And so they were like, it was definitely an African-American hair. Mm -hmm. When in all actuality, that's not something that you can 100% prove. Like it's the amount of bullshit that is in forensics is... Mm -hmm overwhelming yeah. like well a especially lot of in the early is... 90s before dna became a thing but i mean even with some of that some of the the like quote unquote evidence that is used in trials today is still very shaky evidentiary wise you know what i mean like it's yeah. i've heard the same about bite marks yeah, like apparently saying, yeah. bite science and forensics is just complete yeah. bullshit bite marks fires all sorts like of matching stuff. teeth to bite marks is just 100 percent bullshit even some of the ballistics testing is a little bit well shaky. that's the, that one's always confused me because yes yeah, certain guns do rifle a bullet through a certain way but you can never be sure because every bullet is going to rifle out a little bit differently yeah so you can never actually be sure about the the etchings and markings on a bullet when they have been fired through a gun you really can't you can get it down just like with dna you can get it down to like one percent of guns but you never really know yeah uh, sometimes you do but you know what i mean but it, basically, it's not exact. But basically, they said um, that the fingerprint and the evidence and all that stuff was basically not not correct, and that they were overstating it, and so that they cannot basically uphold this execution because of that. Um, and so, anyway, basically, what happened was the. Um, Hemerson Jordan murders they the innocence project worked with him and they have exonerated him of all charges in that particular double murder so right. we've gone from a double double murder to just a double murder <laughs> um well exciting one down yeah and so he is like I said there was 
a bunch of like i said go back and read this it's very interesting there's a lot of twists and turns and stuff like that but basically we went from a double double murder to just a double murder and the innocence project are still working with him to try to get testing of the dna and the rape kits and stuff that were all taken at the time which they've had issues whether they allow them to test it or not um, it's a lot of craziness, but mm-hmm. as of right now, he is still on death row, um, yep. and basically, he's just on death row for the the first double murder. So for the students, uh-huh. um, so he's he's still been convicted of that. He's his ex- execution has been stayed. Um, there is no like date set for him to be executed at all right now um but like i said they're still working and a lot of people still believe that he was basically there were a lot of false confessions there were a lot of not confessions but false um witnesses witnesses and testimony and uh the prosecution withholding evidence and Mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff so a lot of people believe that yeah a lot of people believe that he did not do this at all and then of course a lot of people believe that he 100 percent did that first two murders just because of there was an overwhelming amount of evidence against him because he Mm -hmm. had all of that stolen uh, material etc um so whether he did it or not that is not for me to say um but like I said, it, it's a very interesting case. It did happen um, at uh, Mississippi State University, and it happened to two of the students there. So mm-hmm. um, that is our story for tonight. Well. Um, the Mississippi State Double Double Murders. I like that they're called Double Double. That's just a fun name, you know? Yeah, but it's really terrifying. And I really... It's one of those things where, like... You kind of hope he did it, because if he didn't... (laughs) There's somebody still out there. But, I mean, there is someone still out there, because I, I mean, from what I read, I really don't think he did the second double, double. Yeah. You know? Well, he already was exonerated from the first one, so... Well, he was exonerated from that, from the second. So, the two elderly ladies that were murdered, um, they don't, I, I honestly, from the evidence that i've read and all of that stuff i don't think he did that one i personally do believe he did the first two but i don't oh, know goodness. you know what i mean like i just it's mm. ugh. yeah it's one of those things like where you really hope that he fucking did it because <laughs> someone being innocent on death row is like the most horrendous thing that i can think of and it makes me uncomfortable so mm-hmm. maybe that's just me i don't know if you have a different opinion email me about it let's talk um but anyway <laughs> that's invite that okay don't talk to me i don't know i'm uncomfortable with this topic but i thought it was interesting and y'all should know about it so well now um, we do yeah now you do well all right um that was a fun story i don't think fun is the right word for that it's not but i mean i like true crime you yeah. know i enjoy hearing true crime stories and people being exonerated of things they didn't do. It's well, always yeah. fun. Um, so like I said, the Innocence Project, they they do great work. It's its pretty cool. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's accurate. Mm-hmm. I guess that's it for uh, <laughs> this week. So y'all find us on all your social medias. Contribute to our Patreon. Patreon.com slash Southern Spirits Podcast. Send us any fun stuff to our P.O. Box. P.O. Box 1743, Hartsell, Alabama. H-A-R-T-S-E-L-L-E 35640 Well, that's it for week number eight. So, uh, we'll see y'all next week. Bye, y'all.